Hey guys, good guy Dan here. Uh, tonight we're going to take a look at, um, oddly enough, a book. It's uh, the Gundam Weapons Modeling Masters um, book. Uh, I guess you could call it a tutorial book. Um, I picked this up about, I don't know, a few months ago, six months ago maybe, uh, from Hobby Link Japan. Um, it's really one of the first books I have purchased. Um, unfortunately, it is completely in Japanese, and uh, I don't read any Japanese. So, um, <laughs> it kind of limits my ability to understand what's going on. However, it's a picture book, so at least that makes it easy. And with me, of course, is the Master Grade Unicorn. This is the OVA with a Verka color scheme, or uh, decal scheme. And uh, the reason the Unicorn is out is because this book prominently features the MG Full Armor Unicorn. So, we'll move him out of the way. Take a look. So, right off the bat, this book features a beautiful dust cover with um, the MG Unicorn full or full armor unicorn and the uh, Master Grade New Verka prominently on the cover. Just remove this for easy use. There's the back, kind of a table of contents, if you will, of all the kits featured. And uh, what we have is a much simpler book underneath. Now we open it up. Full color, which is, you know, nice. Beautiful pictures. I think uh, because this book is produced by Hobby Japan, you're going to find that um, if you have some Hobby Japan magazines, some of these kits are going to look familiar. That's because they were featured in the magazines at one point. Um, I know the. Um, the Master Grade Full Armor Unicorn featured in this book was also featured in the um, the same Hobby Link Japan that had the uh, 148 Banshee head. So if you have that, if you have that book, if you have that kit, you're probably going to recognize the um, Full Armor Unicorn featured therein. So okay, the first page we have tools, uh, various sorts, uh, some stuff you know. Should be pretty familiar. Side cutters, knives, sandpaper, cutting mats, files, um, I would assume are probably masking tape, pliers, calipers, uh, cement of different sorts. Uh, this stuff, I believe, is mostly scratch building material, putty, and gloves, uh, Kotobukiya parts, which I've started collecting after reading this. Um, a whole bunch of different types of putty. I'm not sure what all of them are. Um, the directions kind of... Um, I'm sure they indicate in writing what putties they're using further on in the manual. However, um, not being able to read it kind of limits my ability to understand what type of putty they're using where. Uh, paints. And then it's right on to the material. And this is the uh, the Full Armor Unicorn Gundam. And uh, I actually started following some of the tips in here. And I'll show you some of the parts that I've modified when we get to the corresponding pages. Um, a lot of basic stuff to start out. And simply how to cut parts out and how to file them without, you know, like rounding, rounding out a um, rounded part. Um, how to uh, fill in like little nicks on uh, parts that were damaged coming off the tree, how to deal with clear parts, um, more cleaning up, how to deal with uh, flashing on the edges of parts, how to change the geometry of parts, filling in sinks, sinks are where the plastic isn't completely filled in so you kind of have these slightly visible markings underneath the surface. Fusing seam lines, repairing broken parts, more seam lines. The, the fuel tanks, I did this, followed their, their methodology. And it, it does work out. You know, these are somewhat difficult to do because of all the, um, the little striations here, the, um, the panel lines that go down the, uh, the, the length of this. But, um, you know, it, it does look a lot better without the long seam line running down this. So, with a little bit of paint, 
This should look great. This is an interesting step down here. A couple things are going on. One, there are these little pegs in the feet that control the position of the feet fins as the, uh, the foot transforms. They just remove them all together, which gives you a little more uh, adjustability once the kit is um, you know, in the transform mode. And on top of that, uh, what they did is they modified the part layout of the feet. Um, this part here and this part are normally two separate pieces. Instead, they cut the parts. Um, there should be like a beam connecting this part with that one. They cut the, the beam out and they molded these together so you can kind of move both of these parts as one now, which makes uh, posing the feet a little bit easier. Uh, we have... Uh, Oh God, I don't even know what this is. Enhancing panel lines, perhaps? I really want to know what this tool is right here. It looks like um, almost like a metal pencil. Some sort like a chisel, a very fine chisel. They're going in and enhancing the, um, the groove here on the inside of the magazine. Modifying clear parts. Modifying um, the beam effects. And this is actually an interesting tip on the beam effects. And let me grab one from my parts bin that I have over here. Here's the um, the axe blade. Now typically the edges of these kind of have these rounded nubs on them. They look kind of crappy. But what you can do is if you take your side cutters is you can kind of snip these jagged lines into the sides and give them a little more, um, give it more of like an aggressive look. So that's a really easy tip for modifying these. Yeah, using Kotobukiya parts to add some inner thruster detail. Body work. Better start going through this and run out of video. Uh, modifying the inside of the. Uh, by the way, a lot of the modifications covered in this basically assume that you're going to keep this kit transformed in um, destroy mode permanently. Uh, this is an interesting tip right here. It shows how you can keep this part up, and if you have a unicorn and you transform it, these parts slide, and you realize this is a pain in the butt. Um, it shows that by using thin strips of plot plate and gluing them in there. Um, like so, like thusly, uh, you can um, modify it so this part can literally not retract into the, um, the leg, which uh, makes it a lot easier when you're trying to get the kit positioned. You don't have to worry about those parts falling back in. Uh, these are modifications to the sensors, and they're doing some serious like puttying work and enlarging the shoulders. And they recast the face to make it a little bit you know, more appropriately sized for the head. More modifications. Here's an interesting tip. This one took me a little while to figure out. What they did is they took two parts and they fused them together, which is a common trick. So you have one of these. Now what's going on here is this little gray piece is made up of two parts that were fused together, glued, and modified so it can be inserted from the front. And then you have this piece, which is again made of two pieces glued together. And uh, so what you can do is you can paint this up, paint this up separately, and once you're done, insert it, glue it. Here you go. Now you don't have to worry about these little guys up front leaving that gap and looking kind of goofy. Just make it one part. And uh, I think it's um, kind of a nice, easy trick to make your, your kit look a lot better. More seam line fixes. These are on the, uh, the weapons. They're, these are actually very, very clever. Um, what it does, what, what these sh steps show you to do is there are normally tabs on um, the end of the barrels here and here that um, fit into the, the back of the bazooka, which keep it in place so it can still kind of collapse. Um, the tips just show you how you can remove them, so you can uh, fuse both of these parts independently and slide the barrel in, and it still you know, fits pretty well. Um, it's not going to pop out on its own. You, you kind of have to like lift the barrel up as you pull on it, and then it'll come loose. Um, similarly, similarly, they show you how to modify the rifle, so that way you can just pop these two parts apart and um, insert the connecting piece and paint up both sides independently and you know you can fuse the seam lines on it. So again another nice easy tip. 
And I'm not going to go into full detail on these tips. Um, this is if this is something you're interested in, um, like I am, I recommend go out and buying the book. It, you know, it lets uh, the the creators of these materials know that you know people are interested in. They should create more stuff like this. Um, what I'd really like to see is I'd like to see a book like this in English. That would be awesome. Okay, so let's uh, just skip right to the glory shots of this thing. Absolutely beautiful, completely modified, painted. I mean, you can't even, I mean, the best type of mods are the mods you can't even tell were done, and this kit definitely epitomizes that look. Um, you know, had had I just seen this thing, I would assume you know, it was built right out of the box, but, you know, knowing what I know is, you know, the face was modified, the shoulders are wider, uh, things were sharpened up, I mean, it just looks amazing. And kind of the um, the secondary kit featured in this is the uh, Master Grade New Gundam. Um, I still have my Master Grade New Gundam in the box. My girlfriend bought it for me last Christmas, and unfortunately, Christmas is right around the corner, and I haven't built it yet. So uh, when I do get around to it, I will be looking at these steps. Um, there's a lot of neat things going on here. Um, some of it's kind of rudimentary, like um, with the unicorn, you know how to mask. Um, but it also points out like specific flaws of this kit like there are all these little blemishes on the inside of the shield You know it encourages you to sharpen the shield up and fix the panel lines on it um, Some neat little tips to add detail, you know color this little guy yellow and add some white in there Do some color separation inside the shield, you know make it look sharp you know, How to decal things and again more glory shots and look at that, that's cool. And a nice comparison with, you know, kind of the bland boring. And after that, the I'm going to say the tutorials get a lot shorter. You're going to find that those first two um, kits took up uh, nearly 80 pages, and then you get to this point, and you're going to find that there are another four or five kits, you know, kind of crammed into a similarly sized section. Um, oddly enough, after doing all that tutorial work on the um, the full armor unicorn, the next section is dedicated to uh, the Banshee and the regular unicorn. So, a lot of neat tips in here. How to modify the Banshee to make it look a little more menacing. How to paint up the, the horn. How to apply decals. I. If someone can explain this to me, I've been seeing this a lot in the Japanese hobby magazines. They take a sticker, they cut off the material, that's obvious, to, to reduce the amount of clear stuff you're seeing. But then they dip it in what I think is water, and I'm not sure. If you want to freeze frame that, let's see if we can focus on the text. So, anyone that reads Japanese, freeze frame this. Tell me what this says. Right here. What does that say, guys? Because I'd like to know if there is a good way, if there's a way to make these decals look decent right out of the box. I'm sure there are a lot of people wondering what that is. Tell you what, if someone sends me the correct translation and sends me uh, an email at uh, goodguygundamdan at gmail.com, links on my blog. Uh, if someone sends me a good translation, I will send them a small kit. So how about that? There's a challenge for you. Okay. More glory shots. Banshee, the unicorn. This is kind of neat. It shows the armored arm DE or armed armor or whatever it's called. This is Anju. Some interesting modifications to this thing's horn. You look at the regular horn and the way they modify it, it looks pretty pretty aggressive. Uh, some basic things too, like what they're showing here, I assume. And again, going by the pictures, they're pointing out, hey, you know, this gap is really tight here. So use your sandpaper and sand out the sides, and then it won't be so tight, so you won't scuff up your paint. Because if you paint and you put, you move the joints around a lot, you're going to notice you're scuffing up the, uh, the paint in these joints. Well, hey, they just showed you a way to fix that. Looks like, I'm not going to say they cheated, but... You know, the, the biggest gripe I have about the St. Andrews is the thing can't hold its damn rifle. And what they did is either these are the um, B-Club hands, or they just got a, a second set of hands out of the um, 
like one of the Zaku 2.0s or something and modified them. So it had a, it has a dedicated rifle hand. Kind of a lot of this, I, I hate to say it, but this, this does repeat itself a little bit with some of the tips. Glory shots, glory shots. The big thing they did on this kit is they extended the wing binders and back made them really long. It looks cool. I don't know if it's something I do, but yeah, each their own. Yeah, good old Granddaddy Gundam. Modifications in this one are to make it more accurate to the anime um, look. You know, with the, uh, the white joints and the removing material along, along the waist, so it, it looks more similar to the, uh, the original cartoon, I guess. Glory shots and a broken shield, kind of cool. Zaku. This one's really neat, actually. Um, they do a lot of work modifying this kit. Uh, one of the most interesting tips is they show, okay, you can drill out, see how like kind of blunt this cone is, the shoulder spike. It shows you can drill it out, insert some plastic rod, glue it, shape it with your knife, and then uh, sand it, and you can get a really nice pointed cone. So they did that to all three cones and they widened the shoulder using plot plate, which again is kind of cool, makes it a lot bigger looking. Modify the waist. Do a little bit of um, dry brushing on this. Kind of cool. There's your comparison down there. And last but not least, the uh, 00 Seven Sword G and the Quanta. Um, some of the modifications I did to my Quanta, uh, they didn't necessarily come out of this guide. They actually came out of the original Hobby, Hobby Japan magazine, where they modified um, like the V fin here. You can what you can do with the V fin. Look down here. Is uh, the area highlighted in red on this uh, left image? is uh, removed and the fin is sharpened. So by removing that material what happens is you can fit it lower on the face. So what you get is um, Gundam Scally face on the, uh, the right there. And I did this to mine. It really enhances the look of the kit. And um, yeah, the one on the left just kind of looks goofy in its stock form. And it's just such an easy modification. It makes it look so much more aggressive. Let's see, what else do we have here? My voice is starting to go. Modifications to the joints to space them out, and you know, enlarging certain parts and for shortening others, sharpening the blades on it. One of the interesting things is I haven't seen uh, in any of these Hobby Japans um, them using uh, Future Floor or anything to fill in uh, sanding gaps on these clear parts. And said what they wind up doing is using some sort of compound polish. And again, you know, I can't read Japanese, so guys, if someone can offer a uh, a translation to that comment, what product they are using, I think that would help a lot of people um, to make really clear looking, well, clean looking clear parts. More photos of work in progress, and there you go. Money shots of the double O and uh, the Quana. So, that, uh, that brings us to the end of this uh, Modeling Masters book. Um, I don't know if this is something that Hobby Japan is going to continue to make in the future. Um, all I know is uh, I have really enjoyed this. It has been a tremendous help to me. Um, if just by me flipping through the pages here, um, you are interested in this magazine, I would totally recommend picking it up. Um, it's a good quality magazine. It is all in color. It's nice heavyweight paper. It feels substantial. It's um, you know it's something that has really helped me out in the last uh, few months, with getting ideas and, and modifying things, trying new techniques. Um, if you're kind of an intermediate builder and you're looking to maybe level up some of your techniques, this is a great way to start. Um, my hope is that in the future, uh, either you know someone 
gets really ambitious and trans